for two days. A fin? Yeah. Ooh. Here's a buck. Is the cyclone kid in yet? Yeah, if that's what you call that ham and egger. I've been waiting for that guy for two days. You could have waited for him all your life and not missed a thing. Yeah? Wait until you see him start shooting those left to the bunny, baby. Would you? I'm flat myself. What do you do with all your dough? Oh, I know. Names and booze. I ain't made enough dough off of you to buy a Sunday school girl a Coca-Cola. Well, why don't you give me a break, Spike? Match me with someone I can count. It's against the law to hit children. Who am I fighting in the morning? Texas Wild Kid. Never heard of him. You ain't got nothing on him. He ain't heard of you either. Any good? As much of a wild cat as you are a cyclone. Well, forget me the old body set, huh? Yeah, that's it, the old heart punch. And maybe we'll eat for another week. Hey, know the backer? You're in training. That ain't tobacco. You gotta be in training to smoke them things. Oh, uh, yeah? Hey, Cyclone. How about a fin? I haven't made a dime on this door for two days. Hey, you got a bad memory, ain't you? I just give you a buck. Come on. Peel them out in the first round. Then go in and give them everything you got in the second. I gotta win fast if I win at all. Don't forget, folks, this battle of the century is coming to you by courtesy of Moss Limited in America. Hey, Cyclone! There's a 12 Chinese record down the street that says, Old Chinese dinner for a buck! So hurry up and get rid of this punk, will you? I'm hungry. Yeah, we'll be on the way for that Chinese food is right after the first round. I'm gonna finish him early. Just a talk. Keep the old rest of the bunny all the time. You know. <laughs> Protect yourself at all times. Hello, Lefty. Jimmy. Couple of pals, huh? <laughs> Don't tell me I've got to fight you. Listen, hold your homecoming in the dressing room after the fight. I don't want no low punching, no hanging behind the neck, and I want you to break when I say break. I want you to shake hands now and come out fighting. And remember, when you come out here, you're going to fight. If you don't fight, we'll stop your bob, and you'll both forfeit your purses. Go to your corner.
Both men are taking it easy, waiting for a break. If the cyclone kills the aggressor, but the Texas Wildcat is showing plenty of defensibility. Go on there, Lefty. Go on. That's it. Jimmy, I can take him. Oh, this is not a long week. The Cyclone Kid connects the Wildcat's jaw. The Wildcat was going away. The Cyclone Kid misses a hard swing. They run into a clinch. The referee steps in. All right, come on. Come on. Come on. What do you two fars want? Plan to start off a waltz for you? Come on, get in there. What's the matter with that egg? Give me open up, will you? Get going. I ain't got all night to stay here. Bleach has a lot of respect for the other's ability. And no wonder, the crowd is going wild. little mousy in your home, if you're troubled by rodents, either mice or rats, there's one sure way of eliminating these pests. Use the Tomcat. The old heart's acting up again. You think you can go through with it, Lefty? Yeah. I'll be all right. We don't want to take any chances. Maybe I better stop it. No. I need the dough. Go in and finish him, kid. He's all in. He's all in, I tell you. And you're as fresh as a daisy. Oh, the poor kid's out of shape. He ain't even been training. You promised me we'd be out of here by the first round. And I'm getting hungry. Don't forget, folks. If you smell a mouse, reach for the tomcat. I could have knocked him tall any time you wanted to. It's wide open, wide open for that lift. What are you stalling for? You act like a pansy doing a spring day. If I'd have known the Texas Wildcat was left to Doyle, and it wouldn't have gone in the ring tonight. Oh, afraid he'll sue you for breach of promise if you hit him? I got the reason for not turning the lefty. He's my pal. Oh, pals, huh? Yeah, we used to box together in the Navy. Oh, pals in the Navy? Yeah, until he had to quit fighting on account of his heart. Weak heart. That's it, Cyclone! That's it, that's your play! The old left of the body, you know, the old heart punch! Keep it in there! Go on in, rush him. Make him fight. I told him to mix it, but he won't come in. That's what I've been telling him. The body, kid. One blow over the heart, and it's a KO. Oh, I can't knock out the best pal I ever had. A guy with a bad heart. Well, you're gonna do something. That referee's getting sore. He's liable to stop the fight and hold up that foolish. Then we don't eat.
you fed and did, baby. It was a great fight, folks. That cyclone right across the body was the nippiest thing I've seen in years. Like a butcher felling an ox with an axe. Come on, Cyclone, say a few words in the mic for the people. Sure. I'll bring it in. I ain't got nothing to say. Oh, think of the publicity. Millions of people are going to listen to you. Come on. Tell them all about I want to talk on the radio. We'll be there fighting pretty soon. Uh, 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 seeing as they have no phone, but a hold of a herring. Out like a light. Folks, the Cyclone Kid. Yeah. I'll tell you all about it, folks, if you want to know. I'll tell you how it feels. It feels like I never want to fight another man again. It feels like I'd rather be that poor kid stretched out on the canvas there. A kid that had no business being in the ring. I gave him a terrific beating because I had to. Because I wouldn't eat if I didn't. Don't forget, folks, if you smell a mouse, reach for the tomcat. Right the ring, stand by, stand by. Hasn't he come out of it yet? Mark's still beating. How do you feel, Lefty? Lefty. Gee, I'd give anything if this hadn't happened. Wasn't your fault, Jimmy. Doctor warned me. My heart was bad. Needed the money. Yeah, I know. But you'll be all right, kid. Guess I'm going, Jimmy. Got a kid sister in Los Angeles. See, she gets my stuff. Why, sure. But you're going to be all right, Lefty. She's a swell kid, Jimmy. You like her. Address, it's in the book. Dressing room. Lefty. Dead. Blow over the heart. Heart punch. You're the cyclone kid, ain't you? Yeah, that's my ring name. That's a good jail name, too. The charge is sufficient to manslaughter. Come along. Hey, wait a minute. I'm just kid's manager. Well, I wouldn't brag about it. Come on. Hey, Jimmy! Jimmy, look! Headlines! Look! Coroner's jury ex... Coroner's jury ex... On... Er... Coroner's jury exonerates Cyclone Kid. Freeze pugilist who killed Texas Wildcat with blow to the heart. Swell break, kid, and went on the front page. Yeah. A lousy purse to kill your best friend. Swell break. Hey, you ought to be tickled pink. With all this swell publicity, I can line you up some big fights. I'm not fighting anymore. Huh? I'm through with the fight game for good. I'm never going to put on another boxing glove. Hey, what kind of fool talk is this? Don't forget I got a contract. Well, you can put it where it'll do the most good. You go take a flying jump at the moon. Here, doesn't she? Now, what do you want with her? Well, I'm a friend of her brother's. That's her at the cash register. Thanks. <laughs> Miss Doyle? Yes? My name's Jimmy Milligan. I just got in from Frisco. Your brother, uh, Lefty. You knew him? Yes. He was my pal. He asked me to see that you got his things. Is there anything I can do? You were with him when he... Yes. He passed away in my arms. 
Then you know the Cyclone Kid, the man responsible for his death. Well, yes. The fact is, I... If, if I ever meet him... Well, you know it was accidental. That's what the paper said. It was just plain murder. Oh, I... I hate fighting. I hate it. I... I wanted Bobby to quit. <laughs> Cash, Kitty. Thank you for bringing Bobby things. If uh, you have any further business to transact with Miss Doyle, please do it after hours. She's busy. Oh, yeah? I'm sorry I had to interrupt you. That's all right. Here you are, Bob. Thanks, boss. How are you making it, Jimmy? Fine. I've added five dollars to your paycheck this week. But that's the last raise you get till Bob here makes a real mechanic out of you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Webster. Hey, Jimmy, I know a swell speakeasy joint where you can spend that raise you just got. Have a lot of fun, too. How about it? Nope. Got a date. Dame? The sweetest in the world. Well, has she got a sister? Nope. A friend, maybe. Yeah. Me. Ah. Yeah, mistake. So I did, didn't I? I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Jimmy. I thought you quit at six. It's five after now. I was just waiting for you. I'll have this cash counted in the jiffy. Where do you want to go? Anywhere with you, Jimmy. That's a good-looking suit. Pretty swell, eh? Thirty-two bucks. An extra pair of pants. Well, that was a bargain. <laughs> the boss doesn't seem to act exactly disinterested. Mr. Zenius always shows a friendly interest in his employees when his wife isn't around. Ask him if he'd like a good punch in the nose, will you? Not while he's paying me $16 a week. Check up your penny. <laughs> oh, good evening. Good night. Well. Well, what? Now shut up and don't start anything. <laughs> I haven't yet. Well, don't. <laughs> Who's the busy blonde? That's Goldie, Zenith's wife. Oh. Say, where are we going anyway? Oh, I don't know. What do you say we're going out to the beach and take in the midway? Great. Here comes the beach car now. Oh, no. No more street cars for us, honey. Look. How do you like it? 38 bucks. Why, Jimmy, that's rank extravagance. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, that was so fun. Oh, it almost took my breath away. <laughs> well, what do we do next? Oh, I don't know. We better wait and get over this one. <laughs> All right. Look. Would you like to try that? All right. I'm glad, Kitty. I had the time of my life. Honey, I'd like to take you out of that place. What place? That cafe. I wonder if you'd... Uh, if you'd... Uh, sure I would. Marry me? Whenever you say the word. Just as soon as I can save up enough, Jack? I'll be saving my money, too. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, honey. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, honey. Oh, boy. Really? cute little apartment. Great. How about the furniture? I know a place where they'll give us credit. Nothing down. Oh, one of those, uh, you furnish the girl and uh, we furnish the home places, huh? <laughs> I think the owner will do the place over for us. Good. I'd like to have the bedroom in blue with some of those lovely little curtains we saw down at, at Macy's. <laughs> remember? Somebody would want gas when I'm busy. No business, no job. No job, no wedding. Happy? Am I happy? <laughs> oh, boy, am I happy. I call him! Well, as a living, breathing of an eight, you'll get himself! Boy, you'd better wait at the car, honey. I'll be right with you. Boy, just luck bumping into you like this. Am I glad to see you? I was thinking of you only last night. Hey, I got a chance to put you over again in the fight racket in a big way. Hey, you're a fool to be working around a dirty job like this when we could be cleaning up big dope. Say, how would you like to see your name splashed across the billboards again, huh? The Cyclone Kid versus the champ. Shut up, you fool. Huh? Who's the Cyclone Kid? Why, the gentleman on your right, lady. And does he pack a one-up? Say, I seen him kill a guy with one blow. The old heart punch. What a smacker, huh? Listen, I told you I was through the fight game. Now you get away from here and don't show up again. Why, Sancho? Come on, get out. This ain't the way to treat a fail. And don't come back. It was you who fought my brother the night he died. 
Yes, it was me, Kitty. I... I couldn't bring myself to tell you. You killed him. I wanted to make it up to you. Oh, I... I never want to see you again. But you don't understand. Lefty didn't blame me. The coroner said it was accidental. He had a weak heart. He died from a heart punch. The heart punch? A new name for murder? Kitty, please. I... Drop in again. Yeah. Tired? <laughs> Not so very. Well, you might as well count up your cash. We'll close up now. All right. Well, Betty might as well call her today and close up. Yes, sir. If uh, my wife should happen in, stall her. Uh, will you bring the cash in the office when you're through? Yes, sir. Sit down a minute. Good evening, Mrs. Dean. Good evening. Say, where's Joe? Uh, he's busy just now. You'll have to wait a moment. Oh. Uh, what happened to the boyfriend? He doesn't come around anymore. How would you like to be my girl? Now, don't be silly. Why, really, it could make it worth your while. Well, you don't think you're going to get away with that, do you? Leave me alone. Oh, I'll leave you alone after you give me a little kiss. That's what I mean. <laughs> You better not go in there. What do you mean? Don't go in there. You let me alone. Open that door. You've got a key. No, I haven't. to shake me down for dough when I wouldn't kick through. She shot me. Oh, Joe. Joe. Why, you dirty little thief, you. Oh, that you can't keep me away. What's going on here? That woman killed my husband. Don't anybody leave this room. Give me police headquarters. Coming through, folks. Coming through. Further away. Further away. Hey, what, what happened? Hey, guy shot. Who did it? Search me. Did it kill him? Well, the car is in there now. Come on, come on, clear the way. Come on, open up this way. Come on, out of the way. Officer, that girl's a friend of mine. What are they taking her for? She killed the owner of this joint, that's all. What for? I don't know. Say she robbed a safe or something. 
say. Go back in the kitchen and get that cook and take him down to the station for questioning and get these people out of here. What are they doing here? Come on, get oh, out of here. Let me come on, clear out of here. Oh, yeah. Come on, clear out of here. Come on, clear out of here. What are you looking for? Why, the cook. Oh, uh, he's beat it, I guess. Unless he's hiding in this joint someplace. Well, what are you hiding for? Me no like policemen. Me tell the boy sick here. Oh, yeah? Well, you're the cook here. What do you know about the shooting? Me no sabi. Me go now. No, you don't. They've taken Miss Doyle, the cashier here, to jail for this killing. Come on now, tell me. What do you know about it? You found Miss Kitty? Yes, I know she didn't kill Zenius. Who did it? You catch him by hundred dollars. What for? Me want to go to China. You buy a ticket. Maybe China boy, sabi. Something, you know? Yeah, I savvy. And you do know who did it? Anything out of him? If I could give him 500, I've got an idea he could clear Miss Doyle. I wish I could help you, Jimmy. I couldn't scrape up 500. In fact, business is so bad that after this week, I'm closing up the mechanical department. And of course, that lets you and the mechanics out. Gee, that is tough. Why don't you see Benton, the big criminal attorney? You might talk him into handling the case. Ah, oh, there isn't much use in that, I guess. Why well, he gets thousands of dollars for every case he handles. Don't kid yourself. Come into my office and I'll give you a letter to him. Your services will be worth a lot to me, Mr. Benton. Or you can prove to a jury that she didn't kill that man. And she didn't either. Why, she couldn't have. She's only a kid. As sweet as a delicate little flower. She wouldn't harm a flea. You think a lot of this girl, don't you? I love her, Mr. Benton. We've had a little quarrel and... She doesn't like me anymore, but, but if you'll just help me save her, I, well, I haven't any money, but if you'll trust me, I, I'll pay you anything you charge, anything. But I've got to save her, Mr. Benton. I've got to. And I'll help you, son. Gee, I... Of course, they'll be the usual court costs, several hundred dollars. Well, I'll, I'll raise them, Hal. But I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Benton. You don't have to. Now run along and quit worrying. I'll go down to the jail and have a talk with the girl. Oh, uh, I don't want her to know that I talked to you about this, if you don't mind. Why not? Well, she's kind of sore at me, and well, I think it'll be better if uh, she doesn't know. All right. All right. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hello, Spike. Well, well. I had a hard time locating you. Listen. Hey, what's the matter? Something wrong? I'm ready to fight again, Spike. Now you're talking. Now you're getting some sense. Listen. I need some quick dough. I gotta have it, Spike. I gotta. I'll fight Bruiser Barnes for a grand or anything over. Oh, don't be silly, kid. The Bruiser would beat you to a pulp in the first round. Yeah. I'll let him kill me for a thousand dollars. Right now.
send him in. Hello, Mr. Benton. Hello, oh, Jimmy. This is my manager, Mr. Spike Patterson. Pleased to meet you. Thanks. So you arranged for Jimmy to fight Bruiser Barnes? Yep. There ain't nobody but me could have swung it. Bit off quite a big chunk for Jimmy to chew. <laughs> you ain't seen this kid go yet. Where did he get started, eh, Jimmy? Why, well, I seen him kill a kid with one blow once. Shut up. Sit down, gentlemen. <clears throat> Any news? Yes, but it's not so good. And they won't postpone the trial till after the fight? The criminal calendar is crowded. Unless Miss Doyle can go to court tomorrow, she'll have to wait three months. And she'll have to stay in jail. I'm afraid so. I fight Barnes Friday night. And we'll have to do for the chicken to court cost right after the fight. Rather confident, aren't you, old man? Why, it's a cinch. The money's in the bank. Well, I follow boxing quite a bit. And this Bruiser Barnes is a pretty tough nut to crack. Winner take all, isn't it? Yeah. If I lose, all I get is my training expenses. Oh, it ain't gonna be no trouble for Jimmy to cop this do. Well, I don't want to discourage you, Jimmy, but you haven't got a chance. All you can get is a terrific beating. I'll win if it's a chance in a thousand. Well, I'll take a chance on you, Jimmy, by guaranteeing the court costs out of my own pocket. Well, this Chinaman's gonna be hard to handle. Still holding out for that free trip to China, huh? Yes, and if he doesn't get it, he'll go right up in the chair and swear that he can't understand one word of English. You might be able to knock some Chinese out of him, but you could never knock English into him. What about an interpreter? Still be an unwilling witness. Now, I'll handle this Chinaman. You take care of Bruiser Barnes. Oh, uh, Miss Doyle doesn't know about my fighting, does she? Read it in the paper. Pretty sore, too. Don't let that worry you, Jimmy. Yeah, forget it. She'll get over that peel. And don't you worry about the fight, either. Jimmy will win if I have to stick a couple of horseshoes in each club. <laughs> well, glad I met you. Bye, Mr. Benton. Bye, Jimmy. Often complained to you that Miss Doyle tried to flirt with him? Yes, sir. Did he ever say why he didn't discharge her? Uh, he said she was a very competent cashier. Now, Mrs. Zenius, isn't a fact that your husband had a penchant for young women? Huh? A penchant, uh, in other words, uh, a weakness for younger women. Certainly not. Joe was always true to me. You say that he accused the defendant of shooting him out of revenge after an unsuccessful attempt to extort money. I certainly did. Now, Mrs. Zenius, on the evening of this unfortunate affair, isn't it a fact that when you came to the cafe and were told that your husband was busy, that you suspected that he was alone in his office with the defendant? No. You knew he was in the office. Why didn't you go in? Uh, Mr. Zenius never liked to be interrupted. Now, what do you suppose could have been the nature of the business that he had with the defendant that would not bear interruption by the wife to whom he was perfectly true? I object, Your Honor, on the ground that the answer calls for a supposition rather than a fact. Objection sustained. Your Honor, I was only trying to prove that the witness all along was jealous of the attentions that the deceased was trying to force on this young defendant. I appreciate your intentions, Mr. Benton, but the witness must confine her answers to fact rather than fancy. That's all. Call the next witness. You saw the defendant, Miss Doyle, go into the deceased's private office? Yes. Did you see the deceased use any force to get her into the room? 
No, sir. Now, when you went into the room, what did you find? Mr. Zealus was lying on the floor dying. There was a gun on the floor and a lot of money scattered about. Miss Doyle was very nervous. Did you hear the wounded man's dying accusation that the defendant shot him in cold blood? Yes, sir. Did you hear or see Mr. Xenia make any advances toward the defendant? I did not. That's all. You may take the witness. <clears throat> How long have you known Miss Doyle, the defendant? About six months. Well, during that time, did you ever notice any undue friendliness between the deceased and the defendant? No, he always treated her the same as the rest of us. Did Miss Doyle ever have any male callers come to the cafe? Yeah, one. I don't know his name, but she went around with him a lot. A prize fighter who killed her brother. I object, Your Honor, to testimony that's a matter of hearsay. Confine your answers to yes or no. The answer will be stricken from the records. And the jurors will take no cognizance of it in their deliberations. That's all. That's all, Your Honor. Has the defense any more witnesses? Yes, Your Honor, we have another witness. A very vital witness in this case. He's not here at present, but we're combing the town, and we expect him here most any moment. The defense has had ample time to subpoena its witness. I object to this trial being dragged out any further for the sake of witnesses who seem so unimportant that they were not held in readiness. I assure your honor that this witness is very important. In fact, he's an eyewitness to all the deeds leading up to the death of Joe Zenius. Also, a witness to the actual shooting. Come on. You can't come in. Look, listen, I've got to talk to Mr. Benton. Order in the court. Your Honor, I will apologize for the interruption by this gentleman. He is a friend of the defendant's and Please, I... Mr. Benton. That man is not a friend of mine. It seems that you and your client do not agree on that point. Your Honor, may I interrupt the court for a brief word with this gentleman? Please make it as brief as possible. You couldn't find him, huh? Wait here a minute. Thank you, Your Honor. I can produce the missing witness within 20 minutes. I'll give you half an hour. Court is recessed until 5 o'clock. Your friend has found the Chinaman. And he's right here in this building. I'll be back shortly. like that, and you won't have to take no boat to China. I'll throw you out of one of these windows and you'll fall there. Now get up and sit down. Jimmy, we gotta hurry. That contract says you gotta weigh in at five o'clock or the fight's off. I know, but listen, I can go ahead, Jimmy. It's a long ways back to the stadium. Sure, it takes us a half an hour to get there and we only got 23 minutes left. Come yeah, on, Jimmy. Mr. Bass. Oh, come on, Jimmy. It's very necessary that you go in the court and tell exactly what happened on the night of the killing. Me no catch him five hundred dollars? Hey, do you realize that you're soliciting a bribe? Bribe? Now look, <clears throat> if I personally guarantee all your expenses back to China, will you go in the court and tell exactly what you saw? You send China boy to China? Me, send China boy back to China. Yes. Now, <clears throat> now, I'm going to put you up in the witness chair on the stand.
and you answer me the questions. Now, <clears throat> tell the court exactly what you saw on that night. Boss, I'm in office. Miss Kitty bring money. Then what happened? He come money. Ask Miss Kitty to sit down. Then he asked her she like be his girl. Fine. Ah, oh, that's fine. Now then, <clears throat> here's another one I'm going to ask you. <laughs> Sixth round between Bruiser Barnes and the Cyclone Kid. The left! The... There's a boy! Come on, you're gonna win this fight, kid! You're gonna win it! Champion of the world? 
Look at the gate, huh? We get 25% anyway. Say, who's holding that guy up? I'm sucking with everything I got. Oh, I know it hurts, kid. That's all right, huh? <laughs> Just a palooka. That's all. Just a palooka. All right, we're rushing this time. Too late to raise a glove. Okay. <laughs> Very good reason, Miss Doyle. I appreciate everything you've done for me, but, but really, I must ask to be excused. I'm sorry. You must come along. was responsible for your acquittal. and see you get killed for a measly thousand bucks. We can go to work. We can sell papers, do anything to pay for that trial. I ain't licked yet. Oh, he'll kill you, kid. Only two rounds. Oh, I'm gonna stop it now. Oh, two rounds to go. All right. The old rush out, kid. Face covered, will you? 
Looks like you've been run over. My right's on the blink. I'm sucking that guy. Good luck. Now get this, kid. Get this. If the sledding gets any cover, in goes the town. You understand? There's a question in my mind, Miss Doyle, as to just how you're ever going to be able to repay him. Of course, I'm only an attorney. Maybe a preacher could answer that.
Jimmy. Jimmy. He's coming out of it. Uh, step back, folks. Give him some air. Yes, Jimmy. Didn't you get the wire? Well, naturally, I couldn't telephone you, so I sent Spike a wire. Didn't you get it? <laughs> yeah, I got it all right. I, well, I, I seem to remember Spike reading something to me. I guess I was dazed. Yeah, you was dizzy. You remember me reading it to you all right, don't you? He was dizzy. I read it to him and I read it, but he couldn't understand nothing. Gee, Kitty, I'm sure glad you're free. Even if I did lose. Lose? <laughs> <laughs> you think <laughs> Hey, you think I'm tough enough to match you with somebody who can't be huh? Yes, you won, Jimmy. And thanks to you, I'm free. But I don't intend to be for long. Gee, Kitty. <laughs> 